<sighs> oh boy, so it's been like two weeks since I've uh, made any type of tutorials or videos, really. Um, I've been really just playing around with this guy. Finally got the uh, G2 and a lot of interesting things like the G2 doesn't come with a side handle and the side handles are out of stock. <laughs> so your only option are like third party uh, side handles. There's a lot of uh, cool stuff with this. Uh, once I get more uh, stuff shot, what I plan to do with that is uh, have the files online for people to play with on their systems and uh, follow along with color grading and also doing some like VFX and stuff like that. So hopefully I'll have that some of that stuff available soon. Um, it just needs to stop raining so I can film a bit more. Uh, but other than that, I uh, asked you guys for some questions, so today we're going to go over that. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first question is, what advantages does DaVinci Resolve have over Premiere? To be honest, I, I mean, there might be a little thing here and there between both programs, like pros and cons between both programs, but... You should be able to go into any editor and get the job done, whatever it may be. Like tomorrow, if I had to, I could do the same project in Avid if I needed to. Uh, the, the one thing or the couple of things that kind of stick out to me is DaVinci Resolve obviously has the free version. It has the paid version, but the paid version is quite interesting as well, because if you have a license up until I think it's six or eight or seven, I don't know, one of those, if you have a license from, from that far back, all of the uh, updates of DaVinci Resolve have been um, free upgrades. So you haven't had to pay, it was just that one time fee. Back then it was a lot more expensive, but you know, um, same way with the first uh, Blackmagic cameras, they came with a free license. So if you had that license, you got all of these upgrades as well. So that's kind of one thing that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, will they do that forever? I have no idea, but it doesn't seem like they're going to be changing that anytime soon because a lot of their community is used to it. Uh, Premiere on the flip side, you obviously have the subscription, but what you get with that is you get a lot of um, pre-made assets. So I have a whole website that I make these assets for DaVinci Resolve, but Premiere you know, obviously has a bit more for uh, people that need very specific things or you know, don't really have the the know-how into making like motion graphics and stuff like that or just need it to save time uh, but with DaVinci you know over time now that they've integrated everything together DaVinci's ecosystem of those is going to get much bigger for sure the next one uh, how to easily speed ramp I made a video I don't remember the name of it it was about slow motion and in there I show one of I think I did three different ways on how to slow down a clip and in one of those I show being able to make keyframes and, and do like speed ramps pretty quickly and easily with on the edit page itself the next one's about storing footage and uh, working on a project and how to go about doing that. For everyone's setup, it's going to be a little bit different. If I'm guessing you're asking like, what is the proper way when you have the um, stuff on a memory card, what do you do with it? The primary thing is you don't wanna edit off of that memory card for a plethora of different reasons, but I would probably take it from the memory card, put it onto a uh, drive now if you're working with a you know a project that is extremely expensive you know you have like um different actors there and you're doing a commercial that you can only get access to the building for one day or whatever it may be you're going to want to use different there's a bunch of different tools to do it but when you're copying from an asset or from a uh, memory card and you're putting it onto a drive there is the uh potential to lose bits throughout the that process so there are different tools actually davinci resolve has a tool to do it you're copying from cards and you're putting it onto a drive what it will do is it'll do a checksum and what that does is you know you have it on your card and then you have a copy of it on your device whatever it is that you're uh, copying the files over to and it'll check to make sure that no bits are different for that process nine times out of ten you won't have to deal with this but for bigger projects where you kind of can't recreate that footage again using those tools and they're in DaVinci the free version of DaVinci Resolve so I would look look into that if that's a um, thing that you're interested in additionally 
I like to always have backups of my stuff. So I do everything on location and then I have one offsite backup. So, but the biggest thing is I would always have a backup from your working files on a completely different drive. So if you're only working with single drives or like spinning disks or whatever, I would always have a backup um, somewhere else. If it's using one of the internet services like Dropbox or Google Drive or something of that nature or OneDrive, if you're using one of those, like always have your footage in another location in case something happens to the working drive you're actually working on. That's always a big recommendation that I have, but yeah. All right, so the next one is, where did I learn DaVinci Resolve? So if you're just getting into the DaVinci Resolve, obviously it is a very complex program. When I initially learned it, it didn't have anything. It, the only thing it had was the color page and the color page had half of the things that it currently has because DaVinci Resolve when I was first using it it was just color that's all it did you couldn't do anything else in it um, so I went from Premiere and then I would get I would export an XML which has all my cuts and everything and then I uh, import that into DaVinci DaVinci then goes and grabs the footage brings it in assembles the timeline it didn't have all these other things so as when they first made the cameras, then they started adding the editing tools to the uh, program. And then they added Fusion and then the, all of the audio tools as well. So it, it was like a process to start to pick up the other things because they were brand new and a lot of things have changed. But uh, but yeah, when I started there, uh, there wasn't a lot to learn. And the stuff that I did learn, it was pretty much the internet that I used. What do you enjoy most, color correction or working with Fusion? Well, for me, I really like color grading. Uh, color correction is uh, one step before color grading. I like color grading. That's when you add all of like the, the bold colors and you know really add the tone of the and the feeling to the uh, image. But the, I, I really like the color aspect of it. Uh, Fusion's all right um, when you have a good idea and you know how to execute it. Fusion can sometimes be frustrating, uh, but the more you get into it, the more you use it, the, the, the easier it becomes, I guess, with anything it's that way. But yeah, um, <laughs> the uh, I, I like to color more than I like Fusion, and that's where I spend most of my time in DaVinci Resolve. Is there any truth with the paid version running faster? Um, yes and no. So the program itself, the free version doesn't run slower, and it doesn't run faster on the paid version, it's what the paid version has access to compared to what the free version has access to. Windows already has a decoder for the common video. So to save money on the development, um, what they ended up doing is they just use the built-in Windows version. And you can kind of look at it as kind of being a little bloatier and not using the newest tech because the Windows version has to work on a plethora of different types of hardware. Um, it doesn't need to be accelerated by anything because some laptops don't even have uh, dedicated graphics and, and such, right? So the uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio has Blackmagic's version of that decoder. And it is a little bit lighter weight when it comes to um, the impact on your equipment and you typically see a faster processing of it. So it's smoother, it's not, and uh, yeah. So that that's kind of like the paid version. The paid version also has a lot of other like little features in there. Uh, but when I uh, have the Blackmagic um, footage up for you guys to, um, to download and to run on your systems, you guys are gonna be surprised how that footage runs on the free version. <laughs> Can you make still graphics, PNGs and whatnot in Resolve or would you make them? I'm not exactly sure why you would want to make stills in Resolve versus Photoshop. Because Photoshop has a lot of like tools to like line things up and I don't know what kind of stills you're making, um, but I'd probably still stick with uh, Photoshop. You can export uh, PNGs and a ton of different um, image files from Resolve, but I would need to know a little bit more to properly answer that. But it is possible, but I'm not exactly sure 
what you would be creating and why um, you would be doing it in Resolve first Photoshop. How do you record yourself from a screencast? So I'm guessing what you're talking about is when I do the monitor in the, in the bottom corner. Uh, I just use OBS and a camera and I just treat them like two different video um, sources. And when I'm done, I take the video files, I put them in Resolve and that's how I do that. You could get like, I think it's Elgato um, capture card. There's tons of other companies that make these capture cards, but you can just take HDMI out of like your camera and go right into that card and then just use that as a source within OBS. And then you could do like picture in picture, kind of like how streamers have like their cameras um, and then the, the main screen. Um, you could do it that way. I don't do it that way because I like to be able to in post change the opacity video of me so that if I ever go down into that corner and click on things, I have the ability to show that. If everything was just baked in as one uh, flat image and I didn't have access to both of those as separate entities, I wouldn't be able to do that. If you want to slow down, which timeline would you be using in terms of FPS, 24, 30, or 60? Not sure I'm following, but I'm, so the, the timeline frame rate, you have to think about your, what you want your end product's frame rate to be, right? Um, that really wouldn't have to do with slowing down a shot or speeding it up. Um, Cause you could have a 60 frames per second timeline, but then slow down a shot to 25% if you want it to. Um, there'd be a lot of duplicate frames in there, but playing at 60, your eyes wouldn't see it. Um, but yeah, frame rate wouldn't dictate what the, um, how slow you can slow down a shot. Um, unless I'm missing something there. How did I become a Resolve user? So I was going to say why, but how I downloaded Resolve and I started using it. No, um, I, uh, I guess I'll just go over the, the, the why. Um, so I used to use a program called speed grade and speed grade. Um, got discontinued by Adobe. They stopped uh, creating it. So I had to look for an alternative. Found an alternative that, well, well I found two. I found Baselight and I found Resolve, but Resolve was free. So I said, let's give this a shot. And then I kind of stuck with it. And over the years, it started implementing, uh, when the cameras came out, it started implementing all these new pages. And then those pages just started to use more and more. At the time when I was just using it for color, they also had Fusion. I downloaded Fusion, but I was completely confused until I spent some time with it. And I was like, whoa, this is a lot like Adobe, but there's a couple of different things that are a little different. And just kind of um, being able to wrap your head around the differences. And then it was started to become very easy on how similar they are and how you can almost create the same, you know, the same things in both, just done a little bit. Uh, which features make you use Resolve? So I don't know if there's any one feature, I, I guess the, the color page, there's, there's, there's no other program that is a full suite that has the power of the color page. Kind of new at editing, I'm thinking about getting a paid course or going into college again. Can you give me advice? Um. It really depends. Um, some people do really well at structured classes. Some people don't. I'm not one that is great. I, I couldn't, I, I personally couldn't go into a college class and be taught it. Um, I would either do a, cause I would need to be at my own speed, like, and I can't wait for a ton of other people. So I would either do like if like a, a one-on-one -on -one course with someone or um, you can do like paid courses uh, where you go somewhere and it's like a three day, you know, course that you can do. Um, I just feel like college is way too long. Uh, and, or you could get like, like the, the, all the different um, t sites that they have out there with uh, courses. I was actually asked to make courses, but I can't determine what I would want to make a couple of classes on, how long they should be, how in depth they should be. Cause if I make one teaching every single thing, that'll be like, I don't know, three days worth of footage. You know what I mean? It'd just be a lot. So I didn't really know how to, how to go about it. And how, what kind of editing do I teach you? Do I teach you how to use the program or am I teaching you how to tell a story? Because those are a lot different. 
Like, if you're doing editing for, let's say, the news, you're just assembling stuff, right? But if you're doing editing for a short film, you're it's a little bit differently because you're telling a story. So the motions are involved. How long do I hold this close-up frame? Okay, now I gotta you know switch to a different frame. You know, you have a lot of choices um, to tell your story. So I, I don't know where to go. And maybe I should just get started and then just make a couple different ones. I don't know. If you guys have advice, throw it down there and. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll actually uh, put one together. Uh, what do you think about the new AMD CPU? I think that it's pretty dope. There a lot of big claims, would really like to see where it goes. Curious to see how, how it works because now they're, you know, before if you were Intel, uh, you, or if you, you, you got an Intel, if you were going to be doing something where the workload needed like really high single core um, performance. And you used AMD if your uh, whatever you're you were working on took advantage really well of like multi-core performance. So, but now they're saying that their multi-core with which they've kind of like set a name for themselves is now it's going to be really high frequencies per core. So that's going to be quite interesting to see. I, I I'm all ears to listen to more, but I don't know if I'd be buying it. You know, right when it's you know on Amazon or whatever. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, thanks for submitting the uh, questions. Hopefully you guys found this somewhat interesting. Um, over the next like week or two, I am supposed to be going to a gym, to a boxing gym, and gonna be shooting a bunch of slow motion, so that will be interesting. Um, and hopefully I have some footage to share with you guys from this camera. And then uh, hopefully throughout this uh, summer, I can uh, help you guys with uh, different colors and stuff like that. And also uh, for the DaVinci Resolve 16 launch and all of that, I do have a bunch of stuff in the pipeline. I am currently working on stuff for the wedding guys out there and girls uh, that are uh, you know, producing wedding uh, footage and or wedding footage, wedding projects, I guess the best way to put that. Uh, I am working on uh, title packs and stuff like that that are all dynamic, um, all my new packs coming out for 16 and uh, you know into the future are hopefully all going to be dynamic um, there's been a lot of new things that I'm now taking advantage of within the 16 I know a lot of people haven't gone over to it it's still in beta um, some machines depending on the hardware it's still kind of iffy if it's stable or not um, that's why I'm not really pushing it yet but that will be on the way. If you have questions about the Venture Resolve, uh, there's a link down in the description to my Facebook group. You can There's a big community that you can ask questions there. If someone has some insight on what you're working on uh, and they can provide some help, they definitely will. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.